Walking into our junior year here at Tech, we can honestly tell you we were not excited for the nine months ahead. <laughs> now, many seniors have told us that this year would by far be the most chaotic year of our school careers. Having the SAT, AP tests, and SAT2 subject tests looming over our shoulders, the junior class was in for a rough ride. Now, to top it all off, when we got our schedules, we saw a class labeled electronics, taught by Mr. Wontowski. <laughs> now, I don't know about anyone else. When I first saw this, I thought, well, I know electronics. You plug a charger into the wall, something with electricity happens, and your phone starts charging. <laughs> Why don't you take a class about electronics? To be totally honest, I was pretty afraid of the class to begin with. Hearing how difficult it was from seniors and from seeing the frightening and stern face of Mr. Wontowski. <laughs> in the halls the past two years. <laughs> now, when the class first started, my friends and I were under the assumption that the class might just be a piece of cake that we could breeze through without any second thoughts. After the first day of school, however, our hopes for an easy ride were crushed. <laughs> Surprisingly, our first lesson was about the universe. Now, my peers and I might not have been fairly knowledgeable about electronics, but we all were pretty sure the study of the universe was not going to help us learn about electronics. <laughs> Someone in the class was brave enough to ask exactly why we were learning about the universe, and to this day, through his thick Polish accent. <laughs> I can proudly say, I still have no idea what Mr. Wontowski said. In response to that question, However, it was later in the curriculum that we learned that the universe can be represented through binary equation values. <laughs> While on that first day, we all were fairly shy in meeting our new teachers, the seemingly stern demeanor of our electronics teacher seemed to frighten us a bit more than our other teachers. Yet as the months passed and we started to realize the amount of hard work we would have to put into the class, our bond with Mr. Wontowski just grew. While some still call him Mr. Wontowski, in the halls, it is more common to hear Mr. Wontow, or just Wontow for short. Now, Mark and I have gone to school with each other since we were five years old. <laughs> and we both agree that we have never met a teacher as inspiring and passionate towards his students as Mr. Wontowski. The tense, gladiatorial-like battles for, for participation points. <laughs> the changing of our grades into the hexadecimal number system to make it seem like we all failed. <laughs> or the constant reminders that his seven-year-old son perfectly understands topics we're struggling with. <laughs> Wontow always manages to put our brains to work and shows us how much he loves being engaged and involved with the class. While scary at first, Wontow became one of those teachers who truly had a connection with each and every kid and knew their strengths and weaknesses inside and out. It was clear that he had an interest in all of us and truly cared about our well-being. Sharing stories of his three different engineering degrees, his job on Wall Street, his teaching career at a university, and now his job here at Tech, Wontow showed the junior grade that through hard work, you can easily achieve great things. As Arslan mentioned earlier, the first days of class seemed out of place as we were learning about the universe and its many complex laws. Yet, as time went on, all of the lessons Mr. Wontowski had taught us started to click together as we learned about binary numbers and their efficient way of representing the universe. You always have to remember that there are 10 types of people in this world, those who understand binary and those who don't. One of the great things about Mr. Wontowski and one of the reasons he was selected as Teacher of Honor 
this, this year is when the way his, his lessons come together and the real world applications that he shows his classes. He does not just teach us the concepts and move on, rather he shows us, shows us the theory behind it, how it works, and where we can see it in our everyday lives. In Mr. Wontowski's words, this is something you will all need to know when you become engineers. <laughs> After having two terms of electronics, with this term coming to an end, we can honestly say Mr. Wontowski has had a huge impact on our entire grade and has been one of the biggest influences on many of our choices to pursue degrees in engineering. While he sometimes may forget my name and call me Mike, and spell Arslan in ways I did not even think were phonetically possible. <laughs> we both know that Juan Tao does truly care about each and every one of us, which is why he's one of our teachers of honor this year. Now, just as a heads up to Mr. Wontowski, we did not know if he was gonna give his speech in another language, so we do have subtitles prepared if that doesn't case happen. <laughs> so without further ado, please welcome one of this year's teachers of honor, Mr. Wontowski. Wow, this is one big classroom, never. <laughs> never spoke in front of so many people. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you, Mark and Arthur, for your kind introduction. <clears throat> Tomorrow, Friday, remind me, one participation point for everybody. <laughs> Uh, when our National Honor Society students asked me if I would give the address at the induction ceremony this year, I immediately suggested that they should encourage the smartest man in the building, Mr. Scavo, <laughs> our calculus teacher. They, they were not convinced. Then I threatened them <laughs> that I will write a three-hour speech in German they still insisted. <laughs> Some of them even have a guts to say, and I quote, it doesn't matter if your speech is in German or English. We will still not understand the word you say. <laughs> Sadly, my German speech was hijacked from my desk. Uh, what follows is its English translation, sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, I couldn't be more honored and delighted to be speaking on behalf and for such a fantastic group of people. <laughs> and young man, I'm so proud of you guys. When I asked to give this address, I was excited because I had just purchased the bi biography of Steve Jobs. <laughs> I scanned through the book and realized that Steve would never made it into his high school NHS. He didn't have a character for it. He was narcissistic and manipulative. <laughs> and some of them say they had a bad hygiene. <laughs> so I went to my I went, I went to another book by Malcolm Goldwell. It's called Outliers. It profiles 75 exceptional individuals, the best in their field. He studied such, such outliers and found that being smart or talented didn't necessarily translate to success. In fact, he found at least two shared characteristics that said the best apart from the just good. One is they ac accumulated the equivalent of 10,000 hours of practice before coming the best in their respective field. 10,000 hours. You want to be the best, you have to work for it. Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Yo-Yo Ma, or Warren Buffett. <laughs> they didn't just stroll into their fields and dominated it. They work harder than the others, which has become good. The other common factor is the great ones were all provided with 
and took advantage of unique opportunities in their lives. Bill Gates, for example, was given unprecedented access at the age of 13 to play with powerful mainframe computer. Seek these opportunities. Don't be afraid of them. Two days ago, I have read an article about teenage brain. <laughs> Incredible topic, guys. Wow. It said, I'm going to quote, in scientific terms, teenagers can be a pay in the ass. <laughs> but they are quite possibly the most fully, crucially adaptive human beings around. Your brain is the most adaptive brain at your age, much more adaptive than mine and your parents and, and your teachers. All great minds in science did their best work in their 20s. Keep this in mind while, while you go off to college. The world, my students, needs you as creators and innovators. And you are tomorrow's game masters. So don't let doubts and fears limit you. Rather, find the thing you're passionate about and go for it. If you love sports, run faster and jump higher. If you're an artist, draw or paint every day. If you're a writer, immerse yourself in the world. And if physics is your thing, <laughs> oh well. So if, your physics, if the physics is your thing, play Angry Birds <laughs> until you understand the trajectories. <laughs> the fact that you're in this, in this auditorium today is proof that you have worked hard and made the most of the opportunities provided to you by your parents, by Staten Island Tech, and by your community. Now comes the part of this address where I'm supposed to offer you the advice. You are the United States citizens. Appreciate and cherish it. And I'm, I'm, and it, it comes deep from my heart. You live in the best country in the world. Take my word for it. In my younger years, I live in a, several countries and my students know about it. I talk about my life. You know, when I'm bored with K-maps. <laughs> but I chose United States as my country and become its, became, I became its citizen not, far, not long ago. Marta Gellhorn, this uh, American novelist and one of the greatest war correspondents of the 20th century said, citizenship is a tough occupation which obliges the citizen to make his own or her own informed opinion and stand by it. Make a difference, give back to your community, don't forget about it. Leave your mark on history by creating it. Let me end with another piece of advice by unknown author. Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become a character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Thank you very much.